Villa, Spurs, both of them have got eyes on Champions League and basically taking that fourth place because that's the only place that's up for grabs. Villa, minus, uh, sorry, plus 139. Spurs, plus 165. The draw at plus 298. 2-2 two, two is on the cards. I penciled that in. So then the over three and a half at minus 112. Spurs, a minus 129 to score two. Villa, a minus 142 to score two. Uh, Brad, it's just all about goals and maybe steer clear of the money line again. Yeah, like, I don't know how you see these two teams and you say, yeah, I want to bet on either one of them to win in this match, right? Um, I don't trust either of them defensively. Um, I, I know that both of them will want to score goals in, in ample opportunities here. Um, if you want to talk about just betting numbers in this match, uh, Aston Villa and uh, Tottenham are both well north of the 70 mark in over two and a half goals scored. Um, that number is actually not as bad when you get to the three and a half number. Villa at home this season, goals games I've seen at least four goals are hitting in 70% of their home matches. Um, and Tottenham, another team that's over the 50% mark, seeing at least four games, four goals in their away side. I stayed away because I think as a better when I started to put this down, my bet, before I looked at the numbers, I almost threw up in my lap. I had both teams scoring over two and a half auto bet written down. I go and I look, and I think it was minus 210, minus 215. And I was like, I'm just so far off of what I thought the books were going to make this game that I had to steer clear. Um, but I love goals in this match, just two over teams. But I stayed away just because I couldn't get myself all the way to, uh, to pick the correct bet for this game. Uh, yeah, it's one of them games where it's you have it, we have it. I think that both of them have an opportunity here. Uh, I think the onus is on Spurs to actually go and try and uh, do a, a number on uh, Villa. Uh, Holser, I will come back to you on that because you say they've beaten City twice. What, York City? And we were talking about basically Arsenal. Um, who have they beaten recently when they've been like scoring fives and sixes? Because you say Newcastle. Newcastle wouldn't have beaten York City on that performance on that day. Mark O'Hare, Villa Spurs, goals, leave the money line alone. But Spurs have got an opportunity here. They do because um, they've got a full three week to prepare for this game. And Aston Villa are in Amsterdam to face Ajax on Thursday night. We know Unai Emery's love affair with European silverware. So I expect Villa to field a relatively strong team for that, that game. And it's... Regardless, it's a bit of an inconvenience playing on a Thursday before this match on Sunday. But I agree, goals all the way for me here. Uh, the reverse game was tremendous fun. We expected it to be good fun, but it was brilliant. Just the three goals, but 4.1 expected goals, 33 shots, eight big chances, 12 corners, and the woodwork was hit three times as well. So I'm hopeful we'll see something similar on Sunday. Uh, now, I very rarely back over three and a half goals, especially when it's minus money. But I can see people probably uh, wincing a little bit, the fact that I'm going to put this up. But I still think there's an edge and value in over three and a half goals. Brad's already highlighted some of the key numbers there. Both teams are displaying more than 50% hit rates in this particular market. Villa at Villa Park have seen an average of 385 goals per game, an XG of 357. 10 of 13 have seen BTTS. 69% have gone over three and a half. So pretty much ticks everywhere you look there. Spurs, obviously, 75% away games have seen BTTS. 58% have gone over three and a half. Actual goal per game output, 3.83, and the XG of 318. So a touch of overperformance, but still not much there to deter you away from a goal-heavy game. I think tactically, it suits both teams because they both want to attack and approach games uh, in the fluent um, uh, game style, whereas... I think Spurs recently haven't been at their best because Palace and Wolves have gone there and sat in uh, and asked them to take the initiative. Villa won't do that. Villa will play on the front foot. Uh, both teams obviously play a very high lines as well. Uh, I think from Tottenham's perspective, they're likely to get Pedro Porro and Richarlison back. You've already got Sand, Werner, Johnson, Madison. They're supremely stopped. Villa, well, Watkins and Bailey are just unplayable at the minute. They're both scoring, creating, combining. And um, yeah, you look at their more recent performances... Spurs, since late October, 17 Premier League games, 16 have gone over in BTTS, 9 have gone over 3.5. Villa's last 9, 7 BTTS and over, 6 over 3.5. These two teams chasing top 4 
have kept six clean sheets and five clean sheets between them, which is not numbers you associate with a top four team. And uh, just to top it off, Villa have scored at least twice on 16 occasions, Spurs on 20 matches so far. So, yeah, I think both teams could score at least twice here, and that will be around plus 200 potentially. Uh, that, that's a really nice price to cheer on if you don't want to get with the over three and a half goals, which I'm promoting as a, an official bet. Marco, yeah, honestly, I've been doing this so many years, this gig, and obviously I still make mistakes. I've not seen a game where both sides are minus 142 to score twice and minus 129 to score twice. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I, I'm I like, know. hang on a minute. It's like, it's, uh, do you know what, Phil? It's, it's, it's absolutely fair enough as well. You kind of you yeah, do all is, the numbers yeah. and you're like, I can't, I can't say that's a bad price. Like, I fully expect both teams to score. But it is, no, it is a bad price, but it's right. Yeah, no, it is a bad (laughs) price, but it's right because you're almost forced to take it. I mean, you're almost looking at this game thinking this starts at 2-2. I mean, it's crazy. Um, They're a mirror image of each other. I mean, if I said to you, Douglas Luiz um, is now getting in the box, and I mean... The second, we used to have two boxes. You have a six-yard box, and then you have another box before you get to the 18-yard box of the the penalty spot box. He's in between the penalty spot box and the six-yard box whenever anyone gets wide now. So there's another body going in the box. Spurs, they can have five players in the opposing box as well. The RB, you have a look at Johnson. You've got McCann, you have a little look at Madison. It's just mirror image of each other and then you put in what's up for grabs well it's just absolutely uh, crazy let's have a little look at the official picks please over three and a half goals minus 112 and there we'll have first half corners for Arsenal minus two at minus 130 just as a reminder of what Brad went for in the last game. Thank you for that. Uh, just uh, It's always nice to update and make sure that people who've joined late get to see. So Arsenal, first half corners. Arsenal minus two, which means if they win by two in the first half, it is basically uh, a push. But the over three and a half goals in the Villa Spurs game at minus one, two, one, one, two. Remember, they're both odds on. Minus money to score twice. So you could go with maybe two or three anytime goal scorers as well. Fancy Madison will score uh, this week. 